All right, next up we have Lori Guido. So your question is, uh, what song, oh, sorry about that, yeah, what song best describes your life story? <laughs> you can wait till at the end of the presentation if it, yeah. Um, oh, well, I can't tell that one because my daughter's in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's just say, because she's never heard the real one, oh. um, I love rock and roll. All right on. You can, tell, you can tell the other one later, not in front of the rest of the well, I'll just make her cover or just make, ears. Yeah, cover your ears. Cover your ears. <laughs> she wonders why I know what she's done before she's done it. Uh. <laughs> it's usually because we already, either I or her, her, her father already did it. <laughs> well, how did you know I was going to do that? And we just know. We're really smart. <laughs> and she believed us for a whole bunch of years. Is that how my, my mama always knew when I snuck out of the house? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Oh, yeah. All right, you ready to roll? Ready. Okay. Uh-huh, but you're not. And I know. You're going. Okay, my name is, like, is Lori Guido. I'm a retired Fed, Woo-hoo! but I still do side gigs for First Descent, which is a woman-owned small IT consulting firm out of Arlington, Virginia. The title of my talk, like the sign says, is Learning to Code Again. I will share with you some, some things I learned when developing an iOS prototype that is now being used as a basis for an app that is estimated to save over $16 million for one federal agency. First, some background. I started working in IT probably for mo before most of you were born. For 14 years, I held a bunch of titles, programmer, systems analyst, system designer, system admin at times, so I did go into the dark side, and sometimes project manager, which is even darker than the other side. Um, I, wrote, I wrote in the ancient languages, including Assembler, COBOL, Fortran, Pascal, and SAS on the Unisys deck and a whole bunch of other hardware that hopefully is not used anymore, although maybe there's some people that have it. <laughs> then I sold my soul, became a manager, and dealt with tech people for over 20 years. I was using people skills more than technical skills and thought I was forgetting the tech stuff that I had known. Then I pissed off the CIO. <laughs> And so near the end of the, my, my career, I got a chance to create prototypes using software that I had never touched, and pro packages too, basically learning to st starting to code again. I was surprised the area was willing to hire me, but I was good at what I did, and they liked my work. Here's the lessons. Monitor your career and your skill sets so you can continually improve upon them, learn new things, and have a satisfying career. But don't discount the old stuff you already know. It is marketable and it is transferable. Be brave, assess the risk, but take the leap if you think it's worth it. Some people get comfortable in what they know so they don't try new things because they're afraid. But how do you know, how would you feel if you miss a great opportunity because you were scared? Riding code is like riding a bike. Once you're good at it, you never really forget the skill. Operating systems and languages are really actually a lot alike. It, once you know one language, you can leverage that information to learn a new, new skill or a new product or a new language. Tools and techniques that you use in college or, in, or early in your career are probably still helpful today. For example, the pseudocode allowed me to map out what I needed to be done and identify snippets of useful code that I stole from other places. <laughs> use pictures to show what you were thinking about building. Pictures help get better feedback. Seeing the picture gives the customer something to react to instead of telling you, telling you flat out you're stupid. Um, and they feel like they're critiquing the picture instead of instead of you personally. Customer relationship management skills are useful in all aspects of life. Being able to create rapport with a person that you're building an app for will help the process go smoother and help them get the product they can really use. Interact with your customers frequently. Keep them in the loop on the status of the project. Repeat back to the customer in your own words what you think they are saying to verify that you have correctly interpreted what they are talking about. I could give you some examples of that. Um, but I won't because I have 15 seconds. Don't count, <laughs> don't count the older employees out. They can learn new technology. Really, we can. Um, but only if you let them try. Most older employees have already learned several packages and languages, so they probably actually know how to use, learn the, to new technologies more efficiently. 
Get everyone young and old, new or senior, the opportunity to train and to try new things, and you'll have a happier, more productive workforce and help your company's bottom line at the same time. It's really simple math. If you're replacing someone, research shows that it takes 50 to 60 percent of an employee's salary, annual salary, to find out, find a direct replacement. And the same survey show, or study showed it takes eight to 26 weeks for an employee to achieve full productivity. And a LinkedIn survey said 94% of the employees said they would stay at the company longer if, they, if it invested in their career development. So you might want to keep the other employees around and, not, and just retrain them a little bit. It's cheaper. So my final product was written in Swift on an iOS MacBook. A user taps the big white button in the middle of the screen. An API call is made to get the lat long. And then another call is made to a census API that returns various geography data that the user needs. The people who requested the prototype used it to prove it could be done more cost effectively than modifying the existing system. They have now hired a new contractor, because I retired, for 35K to take what I had written and to make it operational. And again, saving an estimated $16 million in programming and software counts, costs. So give everyone the opportunity to try new things and learn, and you might be surprised with what, what, what things they can come up with.